All right, I'm going to be doing the part two, so to speak, to the video I did about answering Eric Phelps, the live stream that I did a few days ago. Uh, got a thing about Eric Phelps, you know, he mentioned me in one of his videos, and I know he's done a reply, and I haven't gotten to listen to that yet. Some of you have let me know about it in the comments. Thank you for letting me know. I love it when people try to keep me informed of things and whatever else. Thank you for that, helping me with my research. I really do appreciate that. I uh, like to read the comments. I can't reply to everybody, so sorry about that. I get a lot of comments in a day. But uh, I'm going to be doing the actual study now to talk about this thing of should we unite with the enemies, our enemies, in order to, you know, go against a common enemy or something like this. Should we unite with heretics? Um, should Christians unite with the lost against a common enemy is the name of the study. All right, so we're going to start out in Amos chapter 3. Because I, I don't know what Eric Phelps said in his reply to me, what I said the other day in the video, but um, this one here, I'm just, I already wrote the sermon notes. We were at our office this morning, and I did a couple things on the computer before, you know, we had uh, breakfast, and then we had a couple other things to do. I looked and I saw, oh, okay, you know, here's the name of the thing he did replying, so I have no idea what he said. Um, but I had these notes written up and I said, we have to get up to the property. We have some work to do around the property here. And while they're doing some stuff, having a good time, I'm going to be back here working, getting these sermons done. And I, this is a very important question. It isn't just a thing about myself and Eric Phelps, what's going on there. It's a thing about, you know, we all get tempted to want to join with lost people. Uh, there's a common enemy. What should we do as Christians? Should we compromise and go along with people that we don't agree with or, you know, whatever? Well, that's what this study is going to be. Amos chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Okay, let's start out with prayer here. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that we would submit ourselves to your word. Um, again, that we would not rely on our own feelings and emotions, that we would not um, try to use worldly arguments or worldly philosophies or movies or whatever else, but that uh, we would go with the scriptures as our final authority and uh, not denominational feelings and whatever else, Lord. Uh, now I pray that you would please help me to speak in line with your word your holy word, the King James Bible. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Think about this. Verse 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Is that true of Christians today? I mean, it's written to the house of Israel there. O, ch o children of Israel, verse 1. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Does God know anybody else today besides the body of Christ? No. God is very selective. You'll see that all throughout the Bible. Um, God is not one that says, I want the vast majority. God's not for democracy, <laughs> or the, where the majority rules, and let's just all come up with some kind of... God says, here are my rules, here are my laws, and if anybody wants to follow them, okay, come along with your free will to follow this. The Holy Spirit will draw you. You're not coming of your own... Uh, mental capacities or something like that. It's just the Holy Spirit draws, and then he says, okay, it's up to you. Accept or reject. If you accept, then I'll continue to lead you. If you reject, then I say, bye-bye, harden your heart, go ahead, go off and do it your way. That's what's going on there. All right, the Lord deals with a small number of people. Very important to understand that. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. See, here's, it's a double-edged sword like this book right here. Um, this book is sharper than any two-edged sword. Why? It has the power to lead to truth. It also has the power to punish if you're not leading into truth. It's a blessing and it's also a cursing. Say it that way. Okay. You are the ones I'm dealing with. You are the only people, the body of Christ. Back in the Old Testament, the children of Israel. Today, the body of Christ. I'm going to deal solely exclusively with you and I'm going to hold you more accountable than the other people. If you get involved in sin, if you get involved in iniquity, I will punish you for all of your iniquities before I punish the rest. Hmm. It's wonderful to be saved. 
Absolutely. Sure it is. But uh, you better be careful who you associate with. You see, if you get around the world, you will have to compromise. Um, they rarely compromise for you. If they hear that you're a Christian at first, they might not swear. They might not say some dirty jokes or whatever else. But the longer you're around them, if you keep your mouth shut, they will start to swear more. They will start to tell dirty jokes and they will start to vex you. Am I right? Put it down in the comments if you agree with that, if you've seen that, tell your experiences. Again, your comments on these videos, it's not just for me. It's for the body of Christ out there. It's for other people, even lost people that come along and they watch these videos. They'll look down at the comments and they'll see if everybody's just saying I'm a nut or whatever else. You know, I, I thank the Lord. Let me just say this. I thank the Lord that I don't have just a bunch of brain dead followers that watch my videos and just, oh, praise the Lord for you, Brother Brian. You're the best preacher ever. I just love it. It's the best sermon I've ever heard. It. You know, I want to have some back and forth. Well, brother, I really hear what you're saying, but I disagree with you on this point. Or, or hey, that was a great sermon. It reminds me of something the Lord showed me, and, and you didn't put this in the sermon. You should have had this verse in there. Okay? Tell your personal experiences to other people. This is a great place to witness for the Lord, a great place to confess Jesus Christ before men. And you put it in the comments, and you start to do that more and more. It'll take away your uh, fear of witnessing for the Lord. Out of, the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, you know? Well, written word, you can't exactly speak it. I guess some people can with their Google phone thing or whatever. But <laughs> um, can two walk together except they be agreed? Um, here comes a violent group of Chinese. They're coming down, Chinese soldiers, marching down the streets, coming into my town. And they're coming in. Hey, everybody, let's join together. Let's fight the common enemy. Well, in a sense, okay, uh, I have Catholic neighbors and I have other neighbors that are just heathen and whatever else. I'm not going to let the Chinese just kill them. Certainly not. But uh, let's join together and have an organized army. Eh, uh, no, no, no. I'm not going to do that. Well, here comes uh, Islam. Islam's a great threat and whatever else. Well, about the same as Roman Catholicism, in my opinion. In fact, probably even least, less than the Roman Catholic Church, but that's another issue. Let me, let's join with other, let's, let's join with Catholics because the, the Muslims, they don't believe that Jesus is God. The Catholics, at least, they believe that. So I can join with the Catholic. No, no. Um, can two walk together except they be agreed? I'm not going to march shoulder to shoulder with people that are heretics. I'm just not going to do that. But brother, to get a, a, a political advantage, you see, in order for us to be able to, to expel the Jesuit order, we have to be able to do... No. Um, you know, it's kind of funny, too, the thing of Eric Phelps. You know, he's a Calvinist and believes in the preordained... Or, or preordained... Ordinated? The, pre, the preordained will of God. Well, uh, doesn't... Wouldn't that line up with Bible prophecy? I'm not just saying, all oh, the rapture's happened so we can just sit around in white robes looking up at the sky or something. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, we know what's coming. We know about the Antichrist kingdom. We know that America has to be taken down. We know what the armies that are being brought in here, oh, excuse me, immigrants, we know what it's about. We know. We know why they're allowing sodomy, the whole pervert agenda. We know why it's being pushed. It's genocide. People sterilizing themselves. We know what it's about. You see? We know what the, all the racism stuff is going on. Blacks can hate whites, but whites, if they hate blacks, or even say anything about blacks, oh, it's racism, racism, Ku Klux Klan, or something. But black people, you know, Black Lives Matter and whatever else, all these other white hate organizations. And, you know, oh, there's people in Black Lives Matter that don't really hate white people. Yeah, but most of them do. All right? So, whatever. We know what it's about. You see? Oh, but we need to join together because we, you know, if we could just get some people together and we could disband the Jesuits and, and maybe we could do what? Overthrow what the Bible says about prophecy in the end times? And even if you say, well, brother, I don't even know if it's the end times. Okay, let's go with that just for proving a point. Doesn't America have to be punished for the iniquity that this nation has done? 
Oh, but we have to do it and, and keep the electricity on. We have to do it and be able to drive our car to the gas station and to the grocery store. And we have to be able to do it in such a way that we won't have to feel pain. No. No. <laughs> oh, I'm just afraid that America could become a third world country. Uh, I think it would be a blessing. I remember being in Honduras and driving along and looking out the bus window. You know, they got these old American buses, old Bluebird buses that they get down there in Honduras. And they patch the things together and they're, oh, it's a, it's a passenger bus. Come on, we'll take you to the, you know, city, to San Pedro Sula. And, and, uh, and you know, you get in this bus and you're uh, cruising along. It's, you know, smoking like crazy or whatever else. And here comes a Toyota pickup truck going driver and passenger and somebody sitting in the middle and somebody sitting on the passenger seat or on the passenger's lap in the passenger seat. And uh, in the bed, there's about 15 people holding on to something or whatever, or some guy riding on the, the bumper or something, hanging on to somebody else's back. <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah, in America, never happened. It'd be the police. They'd call, you know, eight cruisers out to arrest the guy, take you off to jail if you try to do that. And I remember the one guy took me for a ride in his car down there, this little Toyota uh, Corolla or Celica or something, I forget. It was an older one. And he goes to take off, pulls off, and didn't tell me that the seat was unbolted. So I'm sitting there like this, and he goes, wing, 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 and takes off, you know, and I'm, oh, the seat starts going backwards. I'm grabbing for the dashboard. He's cracking up, you know. Big dumb American here. He doesn't understand what it's like to have, you know, you just, you leave the seat unbolted because you have to, you know, take it out occasionally and you put cargo in there and, you know, <laughs> America? Oh, no, oh, that would never pass inspection. And how dare you drive such an old vehicle and it's, you know, it's, it doesn't, doesn't even have all the same color paint on it. That's terrible. I think it'd be a good thing to go back to that, where people could actually invent things and not have to constantly worry about inspections and all the other stuff. But if there's no inspections, people might have their car break down and leave them somewhere. Uh-huh. Then you might actually have people relying on each other again, you know? What a thought. Uh, Romans chapter 13. Or, I'm sorry, no, I'm looking at the wrong notes. 2 Corinthians, 2 <laughs> Corinthians chapter 6. Don't worry, my multi-million dollar team will cut that part of the video out because it wasn't very professional. Yes, sir. This is actually my studio again, remember, like some of the trolls used to say about it. Brian Dunlinger, you know, he's got this green screen. He actually records his stuff in a, in a studio someplace. He's, you know, Works for the CIA and NASA and a bunch of other things like that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yes, sir. This is a. This is this is all animated right here. It's not a real tree. It's a lot easier for me to be, you know, in a multi-million-dollar studio than out standing in the woods on my property. You know, and the and the bugs that you can hear in the background, the crickets and things. Um, yeah, that's not. That's just all added in. It's sound effects. <sighs> People are crazy. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 18. See this thing about can two walk together except, except they be agreed. Be not unoakly yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols, for ye are the temple of the living God? As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Remember? My children, the children of Israel, my people back there in the Old Testament. Who is it now? It's the church of the living God. Verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, as long as you join together and preserve the constitutional republic that was once founded, and we need to bring back America, make America great again, and we need to be able to do... Is that what it says? Be, on, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, unless there's a political purpose to it, unless there's a reason for it. I don't think so. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Be therefore followers of God as dear children. Children, children of Israel, now we're dear children. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling, smelling savor. 
But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Um, if you're joining together with Roman Catholics and Muslims and Buddhists and lost people, how are you going to follow that? Fornication, all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. How are you going to do that? That's right, you can't. Then maybe you should stay separate from the lost. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. You know one of the reasons why the American military can't win wars anymore? Other than the you know, imbeciles in the government that try to run it and are just going out and doing stupid nonsense and whatever else. Um, it's because schools also have gotten rid of patriotism, but that's a whole other issue. But it's because America, the American military, has gotten very corrupt over the years. Back to World War II, they used to give them King James Bibles. Carry a King James Bible with you when you're going out to battle. That was a smart thing. And I realized that there were guys that cussed and that there were guys that fornicated in other countries and whatever else. But comparing them to the soldiers of today with all the pervert laws and whatever else and transgender and you get soldiers out on the battlefield that can't understand if they're a man or a woman. <laughs> and God's going to bless that? And we would be blessed by joining with that? I'm going to go out and fight for my country's freedom by joining the military. Yes, sir, sir, yes, sir. Uh, or, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Or uh, binary, uh, yes, binary, uh, or uh, they. I'm sorry, did I, did I offend your pronouns? Did I use the wrong pronouns? <laughs> it's insanity. Absolute insanity. And I do mean insanity. You are mentally insane if you can't figure out if you're a man or a woman. Go into the bathroom, get it figured out, and come back in 30 seconds and tell me, okay? It's not that hard. This is a tree, but it might not be a tree. I don't know. It could be a barber pole. You know, I'd have to ask it how it identifies. <sighs> Insane people. Verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Well, brother, it says fellowship. It doesn't mean that we can't fight together. Such a weird way of thinking about this stuff. We have to join together with these people and, and have political movements and whatever. No, we don't. No, we don't. You see, people forget the fact that church history proves that for the most time of church history, Christians are hunted down like animals. We're heretics. We're counted as sheep for the slaughter. Oh no, I, I want to have a voice in Congress. I want to have people that defend my rights. Okay, does it lead to you becoming apathetic? What would happen if all of a sudden Christianity became illegal in America? Can you imagine all these church building people? Oh, it's illegal to be a, church, a, a Christian? Oh, 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 I was never a Christian. I was just going to the building there just to see what those people were doing. I actually was trying to report on them. And, you know, you say, oh, Brother Brian, that would never happen. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, I re seem to recall something happened a few years ago where, you know, people in church buildings had to do this with a little piece of paper. And they did it. A lot of them believing that God can heal things. Be healed, you know, whatever. Oh, I can't be healed from a, you know, something that's uh, basically 99% recovery rate. And you don't think that the people in those church buildings would drop Christianity like that if it became something that was persecuted heavily? Kind of nice in a way, wouldn't it? Kind of sift it out, you know? All these people that pretend that they're Christians and make real Christians look bad. Poof, gone. Make my job a lot easier. Probably be in jail, but the whole point is, you know, at least I wouldn't have a bunch of fakes sitting around me. 
A lot of my viewers will be gone too. Verse 12, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Amen. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. I better read that one again. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Probably should do that one more time. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Is it the will of the Lord for America to, con America, uh, America to continue? No, it isn't. Is it the will of the Lord for this nation to come back and be this great, grand, beautiful? No. No. It's not God's will. It goes against the scriptures. Oh, hey, man. Right up until the time of the catching up, things are great, man. The Christians are just loved by people. I mean, just all these great opportunities to be on TV and all this other great stuff. That's not what the Bible teaches. John, an old man, throw him out there on the island. I mean, don't tell me that the Russian, so or the Russian soldiers, the Roman soldiers, here, John, you know, let's get him off the boat. Okay, John, here, let me take your hand. Here, let me hold you down off the boat. They probably grabbed him and threw him down onto the beach. Pfft, laughed at him. Who's stupid, Jew? Ha, 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 ha. See you later, old man. He's probably picking himself up. Uh, uh. Oh, Lord, I'm in trouble now. Okay, Lord, please direct me to something that I can eat. Oh, there's some trees over there. I guess I could sleep under there. Hopefully there's no poisonous snakes around or, you know. So that was John's condition before he saw, he, got, he was called up to heaven and, and everything. I believe it's John prophesying, prophesying isolation, by the way, for us. If you can watch that study I did on that. Does John prophesy isolation before the catching up of the body of Christ? I think is what it was called. But yet we could expect something different. If we can just join with the lost world against the common enemy, we don't have to, we don't have to agree with them. We don't have to go along with them but we have to fight with them. No. You say, well, then you're just going to completely ignore all the problems. No, that's not it either. I have to say, okay, what does the Lord want from my life? Say it this way. I go into a shopping mall and I'm there and my beloved wife and my dear son are there with me. And all of a sudden we're looking at something and whatever else. And I hear, you know, There's a shooting going on. I'm going to look over and say, it's coming that way. And about that time, I say, let's get out. Okay, there's a back door over there. But I look and I see a little girl over there. Somebody's little girl. And she's crying. Her father and mother got shot down. And I say, nuts to her. I don't think she's a Bible believer. So we, gotta, we have to get out. No, I'm going to go over there. And I'm more than likely, I'm going to be pulling mine and saying, you know, okay, you sick devil. You're going, you just killed this little girl's parents. If I can get a shot in at you, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to end your miserable, wicked life. Okay, you're killing people. I'll stop that. See? Uh, the Chinese troops, go back to that analogy. They're coming into the area here. They're marching on the streets. And I see some elderly neighbors of mine that are Catholics. And the Chinese are over there taking their rifle buttstocks and they're hitting them on the head. Not my problem. They're not Bible believers. See ya. No. Hey, that's wrong. I don't care what belief they have or whatever else. I'm going to go and I'm going to defend them. They've been nice to me. And they have, actually. The, I'm not going to say their names or anything, but yeah. There's some thieves trying to break into their house. I'm going to go defend them. But would I join with them against the, the greater evil and whatever? No, I won't. Not going to. I'll pray for opportunities to witness. I'll pray for opportunities to talk to other people about the Lord. But when it comes to me joining with them, no. I'm just going to preach the truth of the Word of God. And I'll put this out there and say, hey, you know what? You people can take my rights away. You can take my life away. You can do whatever you want. But only if my God gives you permission. You aren't touching me otherwise. I'm going to bring 
your dark deeds to light through the Word of God. And you know what? I have seen businesses prosper when they're good to us. And I've seen businesses fall apart when they're bad to us. And it's not been my will. I don't go in there and say, oh God, I don't like these people. Destroy them. They looked at me funny or something. They, they were rude to me or something. So I want, to, I want to see them just destroyed. I've had some people that were really rude to me, really nasty to me and whatever else. There was a motel when we first came up here and we needed a place to stay while we were looking at properties and things and went in to go into this motel and a guy just cranky old man just, just so mean such a jerk you know and I just walked out and I said okay well we can't stay here um guy's just a, really nasty and so we we left and I just said oh you know god you take care of it and that was it boom done and you know we drive past a couple times I'd say oh there's old you know happy hotel there you know that guy um and you know what about two or three years, I think it was, after we first came here, went out of business. Oh, okay. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of that situation. Um, what should I do today? I have some things to do here, Lord. Can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? I've seen other people that were very good to this ministry, well, to me, to my family. And um, they don't get all offended by my bumper stickers, you know, and, and whatever. And, and I see them doing well. Lord, please bless them. See, that's the impact that I can have. I don't have to have a huge, you know, 2,000 strong army up here or whatever else for people to treat us well. And you don't have to have it either. You know, uh, would it be nice to fellowship together? Yeah, it would. It would be very nice to be able to be with a lot of my viewers, my faithful supporters and things. It'd be great. But you know what? God has us spread out right now for a reason. Why don't you be the one in your area to keep things going? We'll get back to that here in a little bit. Proverbs 28. Yeah, Proverbs 28. I think this is actually where we're going here. If we could just come together, brother, brother Brian, if you could just do, you know, first Bible believers church or something or or whatever, uh, you know, move to an area where we could all, you know, it's kind of a central area in America where we could all come to your church and, and we could have this huge big church and whatever else. I won't end up like the Hiles Anderson cult uh, where you get to worship in me and then I can start messing around and whatever on my wife and things because I feel so empowered and my son can grow up to be even more wicked than me. Like Jack Hiles was doing, in other words, if you don't understand, watch my videos on him. Very evil man, which a lot of the uh, <clears throat> brethren um, supported him and defended him. Proverbs 28, verse 1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof, but by a church group <clears throat> with understanding. And Oh, wait, no, I, didn't, I read that wrong. I'm sorry. But by um, a saved man yoking up with lost men to fight the common you know, enemy. It uh, doesn't say that either. It says, but by a, a man, one, you know, the army of one. <laughs> well, that's just perverted and taken from the scriptures here. A man, just one, but by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. Uh, you know why America hasn't fallen yet? Because there's righteous men in this nation. And of course, mankind, meaning men and women. Um, there are still some righteous people in this nation. And we don't have to join together with lost heretics to maintain the state and to keep us safe. We don't need to do that. Verse 3, A poor man that oppresseth the poor is like a sweeping rain which leaveth no food. They that forsake the law praise the wicked. But such as keep the law, contend with them. <laughs> we contend with the wicked. We don't praise them. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Hmm. I probably should read that one again too. Evil men understand not judgment. Does judgment include God judging a nation that once was great? 
using the wicked to do, to do the judging? Hmm. But they that seek the Lord understand all things. I'll tell you right now, brethren, you get in your flesh sometimes, and I've done it many times. God forgive me. I'm rather stupid sometimes, rather thick-headed up here. But there's times I look and I say, oh, no, Anthony Fauci's a Jesuit. And Robert Redfield, he's a Jesuit. And Donald Trump, he was trained by Jesuits. And the Jesuits are building their armies. And huh. Can God use the Jesuits to do his will? Can God raise up the Jesuits to make a uh, special thing, special sauce for the shoulder? Uh, can God do that to punish the wicked? Yeah, he can. Well, brother, they want to make a new Reich, a new, a new Nazi, you know, German Holocaust to drive the Jews out of America. Yeah, I, I believe that. Oh, but they're going to have concentration camps and they could put us in them. But they could also put a lot of wicked people in them. Um, maybe we should just kind of stand back and let the Lord do what he wants. Yeah, if there's evil and wicked that you can stop in your, you know, immediate vicinity there and whatever else, yeah, do something about it. But uh, it, maybe instead of trying to affect social change to stop evil men from doing bad things to this nation, maybe we should just kind of step back and say, okay, Lord, you know what? Let the war happen. Let it come. Let violence come through the cities of this nation. And the Lord can just keep you safe through all of it. Just walking along, things falling apart. What a friend we have in Jesus. Walking along. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. <laughs> was blind, but now I see. No, no, brother. Um, in order for us to be safe, we have to join. I mean, the, the Calvinistic Puritans and the, and the, the people that were there, the Dutch Reformed, uh, they, they were over there and they were over here and they, they, they did things to preserve their freedom. Did they? Or did they just conform and go over to the world's side when the Lord could have protected them? Hmm. Kind of interesting. We read a thing actually last night in Second Chronicles about, uh, I forget which king it was, but um, he actually wanted to go against the king of Israel, I think, or something like that. And he joined with the Syrians to do it. And the Lord said to him, he said, spoke through a, a seer, I think it was Asa or something. And, you know, the king, not the seer. And, uh, and he said, you know, because you sided with the Syrians and you didn't come to me for help, then I'm going to actually have the Syrians and you basically fight. You're going to be fighting for the rest of your days. You should have come to me for help. Isn't God able to help us in this situation? No, we have to have constitutional reforms and we have to have just laws that are forged by Freemasons and, and you know, other people like that. Then, then, then we can be safe. It's foolish. Jeremiah chapter 17 Brother, you're so ignorant of church history and whatever else. You're so ignorant. You don't understand these things. You would have your freedom today if it wasn't for Calvinistic Puritans. <laughs> uh, I would have as much freedom as the Lord wants me to have because I trust in God. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 through 10. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. It's a curse. It's not a blessing. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. 
Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. Oh, brother, you just don't know. You need to, you need to be so careful, brother. You, you, need to, you need to get rid of your driver's license and say that you're an occupant of your vehicle and not really a driver. And, and you shouldn't be paying property tax. You should be saying that you should put your land in a trust and, and you, should, um, you should say, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a citizen of the, of the United States. I'm a citizen of the sovereign state of um, uh, the Maine or something. And, and brother, if we could just get together, if we could get together, you know, even if there's Freemasons in our ranks, even if there's a few Jesuits perhaps even in our ranks, if they'd be willing to join with our patriotic movement, we'd be able to preserve our worthless life. No, it's wrong. Myself and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's it. And His word to guide me. Oh, you could end up in a camp. So what? <laughs> so what? Be martyred for Jesus, I'll have a better resurrection. Okay, fine. Who cares? But we'll never be able to influence things on the national political level. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, I see a lot of things that happen. I've seen many times where the Lord helps me to do a sermon or whatever else, and I see some people acting internationally. You know? Um, get out of the flesh, brethren. Uh, what's coming to this nation is well-deserved. Uh, what God is going to do to America, um, let him take care of it. You know, one of the things that irritates me about my son, he's getting to that age now where he knows better than me, even though I'm just about 40 years older than him. But there's times that he just has it in his head, you know, uh, why did you go down this road, Father? This, this was a dumb idea, you know, and, and whatever. And I just, shut up back there. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. Do you even know where I'm going right now? Well, no, Father. It's just I thought that we were going to this. No, I didn't say we were going there. And I think, you know, it's getting these little arguments with him. You know, he's not even a teenager yet, and I'm already getting in arguments with him. I love him to death, you know. But the whole point is, sometimes he gets a little stupid. Sometimes you get a little stupid, don't you? You know how I know that? Because I get very stupid sometimes. All right? Sometimes you look at things and you go, Oh no, central bank digital currencies. They're going to bring back lockdown rules. They just appointed a Jesuit to the Supreme Court. The immigrants are coming in. There's 500,000 immigrants in here now. We're 33 trillion in debt. What are we going to do? Is there any other flesh that I can make my arm? And you know what happens when you do that? Your heart has departed from the Lord. Oh, brother, but there was a movie, and they made it back in the 1950s, and they, they showed what was going to happen today, and it's, it's going according to the Illuminati script. <gasps> oh, oh. Okay, whatever. And they probably made about 50 other movies that had Illuminati scripts in them that they aren't following <laughs> because they failed. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You have a task to do, brethren. And it's not just preaching the gospel. Your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You're to grow in that relationship. Trust Him. You know, it's a real disgusting thing when a wife doesn't trust her husband. Husband says, oh, I'll take care of you. Let me take care of it. And she's over there and she starts to get feministic or something. Thankfully, my wife doesn't do that. I'm not talking about my wife here, but you know. I've seen this thing. Some wife gets feministic. My husband's just not making enough money. I think I better get a job. You know, we need two incomes. He just doesn't make enough money. Um, he lives in this little house and he drives this old pickup truck and everything else. And I, I'm just not happy with that. I think I should probably help him to make more money. Or you could actually be thankful for what he provides for you. 
Um, brethren, trust the Lord. Get to know your Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the point of being down here on this earth. You get up there, there's no more mystery. Uh, we will know things even as we are also known. The Bible talks about that when we, when we see Him face to face. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 talks about that. Um, right now is the time to get to know Jesus. Don't wait till you get to heaven. And part of getting to know Jesus is trusting Him. When all hope is lost, when all things are looking really bad, you just say, okay, Lord, I think I need an answer to prayer now. Oh, but brother, I, I just don't... Are you saved? You don't know if the Lord could deliver you? You don't know if the Lord could keep you safe? How's the Lord going to provide for us, brother, if the dollar collapses and if we could have hyper, hyperinflation? And this nation could go down. We could have grid down situations and the Chinese could invade and the Russians could invade and there could be race wars and rioting and looting and I wouldn't be able to drive my car. How could my, t my TV wouldn't work? I, I might not be able to get online in the future. What am I going to do? Oh, I don't know. Trust the Lord. What a thought. All flesh is grass. Every single one of us can go through this. Every single one of us can get to the point where we stop trusting the Lord and we just start to say, uh, what am I supposed to do here, Lord? And whatever. Just get back to the book, brethren. Trust the Bible. Say, well, the rapture is going to happen soon. We're, it's going to happen very soon. I don't know. There's no time in here. No, no date given. I don't know. Um, I Quite frankly, I don't think it's going to be for a few years yet. We're going to have to go through some perilous times, you know, written to Christians in the church age. A perilous times shall come. You get down through the list there and everything. Uh, you know, we're going to see those perilous times, brethren. We are in the beginning of sorrows right now. I believe that. But we're not going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, we have to see some stuff before we go home. And we might end up in isolation But the Lord has a reason for it. So that is going to be it. I do hope that this has been a challenge to you. Um, I do hope that uh, you don't fall for this stuff, trying to preserve your life and save your life and whatever. Because if you do, if you try to do that, the Bible says that you'll lose your life. But if you lose your life for Jesus Christ and you say, you know what, I'll trust him. I mean, you know, I know the history of what the Jesuits have done and whatever else to men that have stood against them. I've been standing against the Jesuits for years now. Um, they've never been successful at killing me yet. Oh, well, brother, they're trying. They're going to get you eventually. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. I don't care. Um, they're going to be forced to do God's will. And that's just the way it is. So, a couple more studies to do here. So, I do hope that you have been challenged by this one. And... Um, I guess I'll see you in future videos. Thank you very much for watching.